Hello and good evening to everyone tuning in. Welcome to the world premiere of Plastic Warriors. It's my pleasure to be here. My name is Danny Washington and uh, I'm an ocean advocate and a TV host. I host educational content for kids worldwide on different television shows. And I'm also the co-founder of The Big Blue and You, which is a Miami-based nonprofit focused on marine conservation through art and science. And uh, it's truly an honor to be here tonight with you all to be supporting Plastic Warriors, to be supporting Bahamas Plastic Movement, which uh, I consider family. And so it's truly, just it's just awesome to be here. And we've got a great lineup for you tonight. Not only do we have the film screening, but we also have a wonderful panel planned right after the screening. So make sure to stick around. There's a lot of good things on the way. So for many of you watching, I'm sure, uh, have some type of connection to the Bahamas. I know that I personally do. I actually have family that lives there and my mom was partially raised in the Bahamas in Freeport, Grand Bahama. And I grew up visiting the islands and fell in love from the very first day I ever stepped foot in the Bahamas. And we know that this place is a beautiful paradise, a tropical paradise. But what we've come to realize, like so many other island nations around the world, we see that plastic pollution has taken hold of this paradise and is transforming it in ways that we don't want to see. But thankfully, we have organizations like Bahamas Plastic Movement, founded by Crystal Ambrose, Crystal Ocean Ambrose. And this organization has been doing some critical work in the Bahamas, specifically in Eleuthera, and engaging the youth of the island to step up and to truly fight this battle, this big battle, epic battle that we're all facing around the world to end plastic pollution in our beautiful oceans. So to kick off the night, I wanna make sure to just say thank you to all the sponsors that made tonight possible. First of all, the Carl Allen and Allen Exploration uh, Group, Jonathan Ohana Foundation, Lyford K Foundation, Serafina Carolucci, Kiana Liu, Chris Carthright, and Faith Han. Uh, you all and your contribution truly made this opportunity happen. We also want to thank our streaming partners because there are several organizations that are streaming this right now live on their platforms, and we're super grateful for that. The Bahamas National Trust, the Kokwa, uh, I, I totally butchered that, Kokwa Hawaiian Foundation, forgive me, Plastic Pollution Coalition, The Last Plastic Straw. Thank you for streaming this as well. And we also want to say thank you to our panelists. They are waiting for us. Uh, right after the, sh the screening is over, they'll be on board and we've got some great topics to cover. So I hope you'll stick around for that. In addition to the panel, we have one very special trivia question that we'll be asking. And the winner of that trivia question will be receiving a really dope reusable kit generously donated from the Plastic Pollution Coalition, which includes a bottle, a reusable bag, a reusable cup, and a reusable utensil set. So we wanna make sure you you check that out. We all, you know, we all need reusable items in our lives, right? So make sure you get your popcorn together and get all your snacks because it's about to start and the show is about to begin. So we are so pleased to present to you the world premiere of Plastic Warriors. The marine litter concentrations for the Bahamas and the wider Caribbean are almost three times the global average. And in 2025, the projected plastic pollution accumulation for the Bahamas is expected to increase to some 687 million metric tons. And this is in the place that I call home the place where the amount of plastic pollution invading our shorelines actually displaces the biomass of the people who live here. And this is paradise. You know, this is where I'm from. This is a vacationist dream. But when you peel back the veils of this idyllic space, you begin to see that paradise is actually polluted by plastic. And in often cases, it's plastic that doesn't even belong to us. My name is Crystal Ambrose, also known as Crystal Ocean, and I'm a self-proclaimed plastic warrior. Ever since I was a little girl, I've had this, this love affair with the ocean. You know, I remember being so little, riding on a Sunday in my father's truck and seeing the horizon of the ocean and just being mesmerized and so curious 
and astonished by this, this deep blue. The one person in my family who had the strongest relationship to the ocean was my father. He taught us to swim, but in the most unconventional way. He didn't give us the skill and the technique, but he tossed us into the deep end. And we had to fend for ourselves, sink or swim, but we always knew that he was always one swim away. And when I reflect on my life and my time with my father and his connection to the ocean, I realize that he was preparing me for something bigger. I see that he was preparing me for the biggest fight of my life. And that fight being the fight for the thing that I love the most, the ocean, and protecting it against plastic pollution. I never set out to um, save the Bahamas from plastic or from waste or anything like that, but for the life of me, I kept having these visions and these manifestations of the whole country moving with me to move towards this Bahamas that was free of plastic debris. And it was in that moment that Bahamas Plastic Movement was born. And we're the grassiest grassroots organization you can think of. We're totally community and youth-based. People that are connected to the ocean, connected to the environment, and committed to making a difference. Through research, education, citizen science, and policy change all around plastic pollution, those are the things that we focus on to help develop solutions to this crisis in our own country. And even though we're so focused on plastic pollution, our organization is really rooted in the hopefulness of engaging youth and young people in education and activism around plastic pollution. Core component of our organization is our Plastic Pollution Education and Ocean Conservation Summer Camp, uh, also known as the Plastic Camp. And during this time, we have students that come from around the Bahamas to learn all about the issue. And for me, working with youth is so important because they're the next generation, right? You start there, they're the ones that are, are molding their own futures. They're the ones that deserve a seat at the table and making decisions that impact their future. You know, you, they're strong, powerful, and effective leaders. When they speak, the world listens. And I personally believe that youth are the change. So in our program, our students, they come in, they learn all about the issue through hands-on connections with scientific research. You know, they're out on the boat trawling for microplastics in the ocean. They're dissecting the stomachs of fish like mahi-mahi or birds like albatross to see if they're actually ingesting plastic. And it's in this moment where they make the connection between how their lifestyle on land actually impacts animals and animals that they like to eat. They're doing the art and the activism around this issue. They're pushing policy and having their voices heard and realizing that they have the power to affect change. And that's what it's about. It's connecting students to the ocean so that they are empowered to make a difference within their own lives, their own schools, homes, communities, and most importantly, in our country, where we're surrounded by water, where we're surrounded by so much plastic that's invading our shores. They are the ones that are gonna be at the front lines making a difference. They are the plastic warriors. Crystal ha has so much amazing energy, and I think that she gets that from growing up here in the Bahamas, and that makes the show run. She brings all of her energy and good vibes and her amazing work with kids, and she gets everyone so excited about what they're doing and really connects them in a way that we couldn't do ourselves, and so we love learning from her and having her there. The first time I saw Crystal, I felt off her energy and I feel like it's so inspiring how even when times may be rough for her, she still gives us energy and positivity to make sure that we feel great and that we feel confident and that we have a better learning experience. Being an alumni of Bahamas Plastic Movement and working with Ms. Crystal has changed how I view how plastic affects the environment and has made me more self-conscious when I'm using certain products. It has deepened my passion for the ocean and the marine life that lives inside, and it has also made me more outspoken when spreading awareness. If I was to describe Crystal in one word, I would say bright, because she just brings light to every situation, and she's just so inspiring and makes everybody happy. Crystal brings a unique joy to her work, 
um, and she has a unique passion for empowering um, young people and people of color to enter the conversation about environmental conservation. And that's something that nobody had really focused on up to now. She's from this little country, this tiny country of islands that people know only for sun, sand, and sea. And yet she is playing a leading role in one of the most complex global environmental issues. She is leading um, policy and activism and actually, you know, in the Bahamas, innovating a way forward to, to expand the conversation about combating pollution is revolutionary. And the biggest part about it, because of the youth work um, being challenging and the environmental work being challenging, Crystal brings joy. She brings joy to the work, and that is magic. My favorite thing about here is, is the connection to the sea, right? You look outside and you see kids swimming in the ocean, and it's such a beautiful thing. And at this beach, you look, and you see it looks clean. But when you take a closer look at other beaches that surround this beautiful island, you'll see that our paradise is actually polluted, you know, and often by plastic that washes in from a foreign source. I, I hate the, I can't stand the thought of a child from another generation of anyone not experiencing the ocean for years to come. And that's what drives me to continue this work. The connection my father has to the ocean, the connection of my country to the ocean, I am viscerally tied to the ocean, and that visceral feeling is what inspires me and keeps me going in, in my fight to protect it. <laughs> wow, I absolutely loved it. I hope you loved it as well. I think it's a beautiful memoir to all of the hard work that Crystal has put into Bahamas Plastic Movement, but to show that this type of energy and this type of focus is what's gonna create a ripple effect around the world. And so for our first panel, I'd like to invite Crystal Ocean and Lovato. Yep, hi Lovato Stubb. He is our director of Plastic Warrior uh, and also the founder of Kung Poi Films. What's up guys, how are you doing? Hey, we're good. Thanks everyone for tuning in. <laughs> well, before we get into the questions, I wanted to also mention that, um, Crystal, the story of us meeting, we met in California, of all places. We did not mean the Bahamas, even though I talked about that I traveled there a lot as a kid and even into adulthood. But we met at the Algolita Plastic Ocean Pollution Summit, POPs, and I just remember hearing this beautiful Bahamian voice on the mic. I was like, what? what? And you know, your energy, like like Will said in the film, is is infectious. And like you just bring this light into any space that you're in. And I think that that really was showcased in the film today. And I'm grateful for that because you deserve it. And exactly. of course, of course. So I, I wanted to talk to Lovato and ask, you know, what was the initial inspiration? Was it that, uh, was it Crystal's charisma that caught your eye that uh, inspired you to start this film? Or what was the moment and, and inspiration? It's the first and foremost, I'd like to thank everybody involved in this event, you know, this discussion panel and screening. And um, also I want to big up my crew, you know, um, I had an amazing crew. I call them my new fence and wall crew. But um, the inspiration for this film directly is Crystal, you know. Crystal approached me about the project. And within the first 10 minutes of meeting Crystal for the first time, I felt a powerful story, you know. And um, as a behemoth filmmaker, I feel like these behemoth stories are so important for not only the entire Bahamas, you know, but the world. Because I didn't know none of this, you know. Um, I consider myself now a plastic warrior. <laughs> a plastic warrior. And I learned so much from Crystal. So the film at its core is about the organization, the Bahamas Plastic Movement. I know Crystal's amazing work with the youth, but I really wanted to show like a profile on Crystal and show a backstory because I feel like backstory is so important leading to who she is today. And um, that was one of the most important things for me and, and the biggest inspiration, not only her work, but her as a person and how she grew up loving the ocean. The ocean is her life, you know, and Crystal to me now, she's 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 a family member of mine, you know, she's family and I'm so proud of her. And like, I have learned so much. I, I'm doing things different now and, and this journey has just been an amazing one. 
Wow. Thank you for that, Lovato. And thank you for making this film and putting the time and energy okay. into it. Uh, you know, as a filmmaker and host myself, I know what kind of work it takes to produce something, even as short as 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> into that. So exactly. thank you for that. You. Because the world thank needs you. to hear this message. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. So, so Crystal, all right, talk to us about, we know the backstory about your dad and how he inspired you to love the ocean, but what was the moment? Can you point a, a moment where you remember plastic pollution hit you like in the heart and you knew you had to do something about it? Definitely. Uh, for me, uh, about eight years ago, I got the opportunity of a lifetime to sail across the Pacific Ocean to study the Western garbage patch. And I sailed for 20 days from the Marshall Islands in the Central Pacific all the way to Japan. And during this time, we were in the middle of the ocean surrounded by nothing but wildlife and waste. You know, there were no airplanes flying over us. There were no islands in the distance, no boats uh, passing us by, just us and all of this garbage. And while we were in the middle of this uh, garbage patch, you know, we swam on it and we saw all of these different animals that were caught up in it. So we dissected this, this big net ball that had this big conglomerate of different types of plastic. And I looked at it, I was like, my goodness, man, why humans so nasty? Why do I got to be polluting the ocean? And then I started sifting through. I was like, you know, well, geez, that's that's a plastic fork. I've got one of them in my home right now. You know, I was like, that's a, that's a comb. I am pretty sure I have one of those on my dresser back home. And I realized that I was such a huge part of the problem and that equally so I could be a part of the solution. Uh, so once I got back to the Bahamas following that trip, um, I had no intentions of studying plastic pollution, but I soon began to realize once I got home that the narrative about how waste gets to the Bahamas, who's responsible, where it comes from, um, there was not much information. No one really knew about the issue of plastic pollution. And I kept having these manifestations and these visions to create this nation free of plastic debris. And that's how Bahamas Plastic Movement was born with me and tons of young children from the Bahamas going onto the beaches and collecting data on plastic that was washing ashore. That's beautiful. I mean, that's what it takes. It takes that one moment, that spark for someone to realize our connection to this massive pervasive problem. But like you said, it's it's ubiquitous. Like we all have it in our lives in some shape or form, but just as we have it, we can also replace it with something reusable and other types of solutions that can alleviate the problem. So yeah, that's uh, that's beautiful. And it, was it a five gyres trip that you went on? It was a five gyres trip. So shout out to Marcus Erickson. Woo you know, he was the spark that got me going. Anna Cummins, Carolyn Fox, the whole crew that supported me throughout my entire career. So big ups to all of y'all. I appreciate you. <laughs> Absolutely. So how can this film be used to inspire others, especially communities of color? Because what we've seen is that plastic pollution um, at its end of life, you know, is usually impacting communities of color and marginalized communities around the world and specifically island nations uh, with this problem. So using the film to engage in environmental education and activism, how does that work? How does how does the movement go beyond just the film? Want me to start? Okay. Um, uh, I, I can start. Oh, people first, Crystal, yeah. Because, uh, fun fact, this project was never supposed to be about me. It was supposed to be about solutions through the, youth, through the lens of youth. And the bottle's like, Crystal, like, you're the protagonist in the story, got to be about you. And we went back and forth creatively. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then here we are with this project. So, this whole film was filmed a year ago. And I've been sitting on it for this long because I've struggled to be on this platform. Um, and I realized that that was actually pretty selfish of me um, because there's so much power in my story being a black woman from the Caribbean who was in the ocean sciences, uh, the representation that I offer alone uh, to, to let people from where I'm from know that it doesn't matter what color you are, where you come from. I grew up in Angliston, our Bailey Senior High School, you know, considered one of the worst schools in Nassau at the time. But here I am still using my voice, my voice to make a difference. And I think that's what's most important um, about this film for me is the inspiration that it can offer others, that there is validity in your voice, there is power in your voice, and that you should use that voice uh, to activate not only yourself, but others. Absolutely. And Lovato, what about you? Yeah, like I said, I, thanks to Crystal for trusting my vision, you know, and, and allowing me to do what I want, you know, and just go forward with a, with a story, you know, which is great. But um, yeah, man, Crystal as a leader, you know, it inspires so much, you know, like, that individual out there that could be, you know, want to do what you do, they could just watch this film and see she looks like me, you know what I mean? And um, it's possible. And not only just everybody in general, youths in general, and anything they want to do, they could see that 
you could do anything you want. And you know, the Bahamas is a sun sign and sea place. That's what we're known for. So mm -hmm. for us, you know, crystal is so important. We have to protect our environment. And I think that would definitely inspire the youth to say, hey, I could get into this kind of work and I could continue to protect our beautiful country, you know? Yes, for sure. I mean, if you can see it, you can be it. Exactly. Yes. Film. By mm -hmm. Yeah, film and storytelling are essential for us to get the word out to the world. And um, yeah, I wish I could have seen this movie, this, this film when I was like nine, 10 years old, you know, <laughs> instead of learning about plastic pollution in my teens and 20s, it right. would really start. So here we are. Yeah. And, well, yeah. But I get I get your perspective, Crystal. I know it's hard when you're entrenched in the work, yeah. and you don't do, but you are the catalyst. And so that story has to be told. Okay. Um, so you both did a fabulous job. So one last question before we move on to the next panel. Mm -hmm. How does one become a plastic warrior, Crystal? How does it happen? What, what are the steps? Uh, you, it's in all of us, right? So once you learn about something, uh, I think it was the great Maya Angelou, right? You know better, do better. So once you know about the issue, meet yourself where you are. You know, living here in the Bahamas, we don't have all the tools that we need to lead zero waste lifestyles. I don't live a plastic free lifestyle because that's not the reality of living on a small island nation, but I do the best that I can and I take control of the things that, that I can and that's refusing to use single use plastic items. Um, so I think just taking it slow, sowing the seeds and progressing towards um, reducing your plastic intake um, and being motivated, energized, excited, and knowing that you have the power. That's all you need to become a plastic warrior. That's the starter kit. Hey, I love that. Yeah. Cool, straightforward. Yep. And anyone can start at any time, at any age, no matter what you are. Exactly. <laughs> we have plastic warriors as young as two years old, so mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter the age. Love that. Love that. Well, Crystal, Lovato, thank you very much. Crystal's going to be hanging out with us on the other panels, but Lovato, we appreciate you taking the time to be with here. Thank with us Thanks, Lovato. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you, bro. You too, sir. <laughs> All right. So next up, we're going to invite over Dyson Chi. He's the founder of Project Ocean Hawaii, and he's a youth activist. Um, I also met uh, Dyson in the past at other ocean events, and it's great to have him here tonight. So hi, Dyson. Hi. Hey, everyone. Good Hello. to see you all. Good to see you too, calling in all the way from Hawaii. How's the yep, weather yep. there? <laughs> Sunshine and blue skies. Couldn't ask for anything better. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, let's just jump right into the question. So the, the main thing for both you and Crystal is to find out what impact does plastic pose to island nations and how are your islands directly affected? So here in the Bahamas, um, because we are an archipelagic nation, where you sit right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, we act as a sink uh, for the world's waste, right? So we are, and I said it in the documentary, by 2025, the projected plastic pollution accumulation for the Bahamas is set to be some 687 million metric tons. And that's debris that's gonna be landing on our shores. And we can do as much beach cleanups as we want right now, but the reality is that we don't have um, proper waste management strategies in place to deal with not only the waste that we produce. Uh, in the Bahamas, we rank 13th in the world for the countries that produce the most waste per capita per day. Uh, and then you add the tourism waste on top of that. And now with uh, climate change intensifying and the severe um, disaster we received from Hurricane Dorian, um, you know, and I just want to acknowledge all the people that were impacted by that. We now have to deal with climate debris and disaster debris as well. Um, so as a small island nation, we, we don't have these strategies and structures in place to deal with the waste that's incoming onto our shore. So it's really a multifaceted issue. Mm, good point. And what about you, Dyson? How, what's been your experience as, as a Hawaiian, um, you know, native? For sure. Um, I mean, Similar, similarly to Crystal, right? Hawaii, we are an island um, state. We are, although we are entire ocean away, um, we do suffer similar impacts from plastics ending up on our beaches, not just from you know our production, but primarily from marine debris. Um, but I guess a different aspect of plastic pollution or plastics that we can look at in terms of impact is that we are we have a fundamental addiction to plastics right now. Um, we depend on plastics at pretty much every point of our lives. There is not a day that goes by where we do not use single use plastics. And because plastics are made out of fossil fuels, oil, that means that every time we consume plastics and we drive the demand for plastics, we are fueling our own destruction as an island state. 
right? We are fueling the rising seas that are going to be swallowing our cities in the next several decades. So that's another issue that plastics have definitely posed here. And Dyson, how did you get involved in, in you know, fighting against plastic pollution and starting your, your organization? Ooh, that's, that's a question. Um, honestly, I think it goes back to me just growing up here in Hawaii. I mean, similar to Crystal, I've always had love for Shin, and it's in my second home. And so, you know, as time goes by, you look at the ocean, and even though I've only been alive for 18 years, I could already see the changes from, you know, I first went into the ocean and what I see now. Insane to think about it. And so when I really realized that these negative changes were happening, I thought to myself, there must be something I can do with it. And, um, actually, one of the, I think that was where I met you, Danny, at Ocean Heroes Boot Camp. That really helped to open my eye to the largest solutions around plastic pollution. And you've just taken off since then, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, so what would you say to the yeah. audience today? What What's the next big step that they should take to help support island nations and island states uh, to defend themselves against marine debris and plastic pollution? Absolutely. Um, and feel free to pitch into this crystal because we're both from island uh, nations and states. But I think one of the biggest things that you can do is to reduce your own consumption of plastics. A lot of times the plastics ending up on our beaches are from places all around the world, mainland United States, from Southeast Asia. And so reducing your own consumption of plastics can help to reduce the amount of plastics ending up on our beaches. I definitely agree. And I like to piggyback on that sentiment, you know, um, becoming aware of the issue. How does the impact of your daily life impact our island nations? Because we are, we are receiving the world's waste, especially in Hawaii. Um, so, you know, just be very conscious about, you know, your plastic intake and the impact that has not only on the ocean, but human health as well and on our nations. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it all starts with with basic, simple steps. We all we all can contribute. We all can, you know, switch certain products out that we use, that we notice our families using, start just spreading the word. And the word is spreading around the world. I think the consciousness level around plastic pollution has definitely elevated in the last five years on, on a tremendous scale. But now it's time for us to really take, you know, uh, focused effort and action to, to change this and to change the course that we're on right now. Um, so I'm excited for the things that are in the future for you, Dyson. I think you've got a lot ahead of you. And just they just thank you for all the work you're doing in Hawaii and and you know for youth around the world. Totally, thank you all so much. I mean, having the support of from adults is absolutely critical to uplifting youth voices. Absolutely, and we'll keep amplifying youth voices, no doubt, no doubt. So thanks for being here, Dyson. We appreciate you. <laughs> We're going to move on to our next panel about youth education uh, approach about plastic camp. So we've got Jacqueline Johnson, who is a community outreach manager at the Kokua Hawaii Foundation. Did I get it right this time? I hope yeah, you got it. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jackie Nunez, the founder of The Last Plastic Straw. Will Simmons, the founder of Space to Create and Harbor Island Green School. Welcome, you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> so Good to be here. Hey, great. Our panel tonight is really about, you know, what's the, what's the impact of youth education? How do we effectively teach the next generation to, to elevate the message of, you know, ending plastic pollution, but also influencing their lifestyle? So the first question, um, which I would love to direct to Crystal, what is the plastic camp and why did you decide to focus on youth? Um, so our plastic camp, it's our plastic pollution education and ocean conservation summer camp. And it's a tuition free program that takes students on a holistic journey from the problem with plastic to solutions to this environmental crisis. And it literally places them at the center of being solutions. So over the course of five and a half to six days, students are learning scientific research. You know, they're dissecting the stomachs of fish like mahi mahi, uh, wahoo, and seeing that these plastics um, that are in these fish are the fish that we like to eat. You know, they're trawling for microplastics at the sea surface, doing scientific research, they're communicating and adding the cultural flair, and they're also pushing policy. So even we, though we talk so much about um, plastic in our program, it's truly, truly rooted in that hopefulness of engaging these young people um, in education and activism for the marine environment. And during this time, I mean, it's just, 
it's just a vibe, like just the spirit, the uplifting, the team building that happens in our program. You see the light bulb switch in these students and it's just the most magical thing ever. And for me, why I choose youth when I work with young people, it's not me talking down on them and being like, you know, like this is your problem to fix, but it's like, listen, this is a problem. How can we work together? So I get all my ideas from my students. In fact, just yesterday, just today, we wrapped up our, our seventh year of our plastic camp program. Uh, I had three dynamic young girls, Aria Simmons, Asia Butler, Kalish Johnson, who are on board leading the next generation, teaching the next generation. So much so that after our camp wrapped up yesterday, two of the young girls, Myra McCartney and her cousin Ashanti went home and independently made their own video to raise awareness of plastic pollution and offer solutions to people in the Bahamas. You know, so we see the kids getting activated and, and understanding their power. And I think that's the most beautiful thing about our program. That is awesome. I've always wanted to go and I'm kicking myself now because I waited too long now that we're dealing with COVID-19, but uh, the footage and the photos from camp always look so fun. And you can tell that all the campers are having a blast. So yeah, um, I'm glad you guys decided to, to continue it this summer. I'm sure the kids on the island are super excited to have some other things going on besides, you know, a global pandemic. We need to focus our energy on, you know, how to move forward. So yes, yeah, so really appreciate that. Um, but my next question, I, well, actually a statement. I'd love to hear, of course, from Will, Jacqueline, um, and Jackie, about your experience with youth education programs that focus on plastic, you know, pollution education, and how has it impacted the participants that you've witnessed, and and what what has been your role? Am I going first? Who's going yeah. first? Well, you can go first. Okay. So, um, good evening, everybody. I think for for me. Um, as a classroom teacher in, in a remote island community, um, there are a ton of obstacles to taking your students from where they are to imagining um, you know, their potential and them actualizing their potential. And um, along came Crystal and the Bahamas Plastic Movement and, and a penny just kind of dropped to say that you know, there's something special here and there's an opportunity to take something that's happening right here on Eleuthera and um, and get my kids involved and get my students involved in it. And who knows where it will transport them and what type of doors it may open for them to become more aware of their own power. So definitely um, the issue itself is, is almost insurmountable. It's a massive, massive issue. But the journey and the empowerment of the young people who we take on that journey um, is really, really inspiring and definitely that's just the key, you know, the fact that um, you look where you are, you draw inspiration from the challenges around you um, and you can totally transform your perspective and go from being, you know, in a sleepy community where nothing's happening to feeling like you're at the center of change in a global environmental policy. And uh, Crystal takes our students to, to the epicenter of it. And that's what's magic about it. And I'd be a fool as a teacher not to just wholeheartedly embrace that opportunity because it's brought so much joy to so many people. That is awesome. That is awesome. What about you, Jacqueline? Yeah, um, I've luckily been able to participate in a lot of different plastic education programs. Um, in 2015, I actually was at Eleuthera and got to see Crystal in action at the plastics camp along with Will. Um, and I left incredibly inspired and motivated to kind of integrate more hands-on um, plastic pollution education into the programs that I work within. Um, I work really closely with Plastic Free Hawaii, which is a program of the Kukua Hawaii Foundation, which aims to educate businesses, communities, and um, schools on the issues around single-use plastics, as well as solutions to these issues. And a lot of the, the foundation of a lot of these plastic education programs, I feel is rooted uh, in hands-on engagement, uh, personal storytelling, and um, collective action. So. I think it's really important to learn about how plastic pollution is affecting communities around the world. And then thinking about that in terms of our local island community, but also when we talk about solutions to plastic pollution and creating a plastic free future, we understand how plastic's impacting our friends around the world so we can create a more equitable and a more just plastic free future. Um, the hands-on portion, which I know was highlighted lovely in the film, just taking kids out to the beach, taking communities down to beach cleanups and letting them see firsthand the issues of uh, plastic pollution that we're facing. It creates the, you know, this emotional connection and they, um, it strengthens their commitment to 
the movement and it also allows um, the collective action component, right? So under uh, meeting people and knowing that other people around the world are working on working on this movement because it's really scary to take on something by yourself. But through these plastic education programs, you're uh, welcomed into this great community and we all work together to figure out solutions collectively. So we're figuring out solutions for all the many issues that we all face within the plastic pollution world. So I think those those reasons are it's, it's those are like the foundations of a lot of the plastic pollution education programs that I'm involved in over here in Hawaii. Awesome. Thank you, Jacqueline. And Jackie, I mean, you know, we met a while back again at the same place at Pops. That was our first time meeting and, and I heard about your movement with the last plastic straw and just super excited to have you here. So how has your experience been working at with youth at the plastic camp, how has it shaped your approach to education and activism in your own work? Oh, it, it's it's affected me just uh, deeply. It's amazing. I met Crystal actually in 2015 at the um, Marine Debris Conference, and we totally connected. Um, you know, similar to you, Danny, but not similar. I don't have family there, but I feel like I have family there because I spent time in the Luther Bahamas working for um, a club med for a short time in the 90s, and so I my heart has always been in the Bahamas. It's been um, just really uh, precious to me. And when I met Crystal and she talked about what she was doing, I said, anything you want, Crystal, I'm in. Like, I, I, want, to, I want to work with you. I, I love, that's, that's, my, that's my home. So uh, yeah, it was incredible. I mean, I got to go, I think it was a couple years ago now. I'm, I'm trying to remember what year, but um, it was just, a, you know, one thing I've learned too is that the energy you give is the energy you get. And they definitely had a lot of great energy. And I, I know, Krista, you're you're apprehensive about this movie, and it focuses on you. But you are the you know you are the pebble in the pond, and as those ripples go out, and those kids give it, you know, you're getting waves back now. And you know, I think it's really amazing too. Will, I mean, I don't want you are a, a central part of it. You're such a great team, and then the youth that you guys have fostered. You are creating a space to create. There's a lot of art. There's a lot of science. There's a lot of just a lot of fun and they're that's one thing it's they really do make it fun and they are the highlight every year at the pops uh youth summit they, they really are bringing the energy um so yeah it's just i mean i have i don't even have the iota of energy that those guys have and i I'm, can't can't be as you know expressive as crystal and stuff when i'm dealing with kids but I just always have that, you know, with me. And, and when I deal with kids here, it's my favorite part of, of the job I do is working with youth because it really does give me hope. Um, and, you know, there's a couple of slogans the Bahamas have, right? It's like it, everything's better in the Bahamas, right? Yeah. But there is another one um, is uh, forward, upward, onward together. And that the camp really embodies that. And the, the kids, it's, it's astonishing. We even, as as people work in the camp, it's just kind of, you're in it, it's going. And, um, you know, end of the day, we kind of look at each other like, well, they have their presentations at the end and we leave it up to them how they want to do it. And we're like, you know, we were just sitting there going, I hope they, you know, hope they learn some stuff, you know, cause then they're also another component is they're teaching it to the community, which is amazing. And the kids just always blow us away with what they come up with. They get it, they understand it, they do it deeply and they, they have, all kinds of great solutions that are, you know, by the area for that area. Um, I want to give a shout out to Lovato. I mean, he did a great job capturing the essence of the place, um, the camp. Um, to see the glass window bridge was amazing to me. And it's just a, such a great, uh, you know, image to me. And it's really poignant because you have the Caribbean on one side and the Atlantic on the other and you've got the dark and you've got the light, right? And you've got the, the two, and we, we talk about, you know, just the whole history of colonialism and, and we even think about the trash coming, you know, from the Atlantic and the, you know, and the, this, the, the, the history, right? And then you've got the calm Caribbean and you've got that, that spirit there. And it's just that dichotomy and the people, it's, I can't say enough, it's, it's an amazing camp. The kids blow us away and what they've done what what year are you guys in for the camps now? Seven. Seven. It's uh, it's not all about Crystal anymore, right? It's not. Oh. She's not holding it. She's just, like you said. She's a spark. But the kids that have gone through the camp, the leaders that they they fostered, 
I mean, there's this real great action going on there and, and a, a lot of support from the community. Um, Krista, you talk about the youngest two years old, but I, there's older people in the community too that are plastic warriors too, that these kids have turned right. over, you know, that you thought were never going to change. And these kids have, have changed them, but not through the head, but through the heart. Amen. Really and I just want to... Heart-centered uh, organization. I can't it, say enough. It is. We definitely lead with heart. And I would be remiss if I didn't shout out Jackie Nunez and Deanna Cohen and the Plastic Pollution Coalition who have supported us from the inception of our program. All the metal straws that our students get, that the community gets, it's a generous donation from you guys. And I really appreciate that. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys, it's the energy that keeps me going all year long. The, the energy I get from, from uh, the Bahamas and, and all, the, all the youth that I, I deal with, I, I, I work with, I deal with it. <laughs> but anyways, it's great, yeah. We got to keep the energy going. I yeah. think my, a few years ago, uh, both Will and Crystal came to Miami for a Big Blue News event, Art by the Sea, and brought a whole brigade of plastic warriors and dress have been, you know, recycled junk canoe outfits, and we had a mini junk canoe at our event, and it was the most fun year that we that ever awesome. had. Yeah. <laughs> so talking about making it happen, we got to spread that vein and energy everywhere. Yeah. Great. It's yeah. awesome. It's awesome. It's well, great. Thank you. So thanks, guys. Um, thank you, Will. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, Jackie, for being here with us mm -hmm. tonight, taking some time out of your evening to, to thanks share. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, all right. So I mentioned there was a trivia question still there. Here is the question. But first, before I ask the question, you're going to go to uh, Bahamas Plastic Movement's YouTube page, and that's where you'll type in the answer. So if you're on your browser right now, just open up another tab, head to YouTube, find Bahamas Plastic Movement, and you can type the answer there. The first person to type the correct answer there, you will get the prize that we talked about before that was donated by Plastic Pollution Coalition, the reusable kit will be yours. So here's the question. What are the four pillars of Bahamas plastic movement? Simple. <laughs> Hint, you can check out their website. But anyway, you didn't hear from me. Go ahead and type in your answers on YouTube and the first person will win that awesome reusable kit. Okay, so let's move on to our next panel about youth activism, involvement in plastic legislation. This is a really good one. We've got Taryn Johnson, who's a youth activist with the Bahamas plastic movement. We have Abigail Rainerine, and she's also a youth activist with BPM. Lindy Bao, and she's the environment officer for the Bahamas Ministry of Environment, and Dyson Chi is back with us again. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hello. Hi. Thanks for being here. All right. So we've got a couple questions. We're going to dive right in, guys. So the first question is all about, can you tell us about your specific role and the outcomes of some of the policies that you've, I think I've actually, let's see, I've got the wrong question there. Okay, hold on a second. First, why don't we just do this? If you guys can give everyone a couple sentences of why you got involved. I think Dyson gave us his synopsis already, but if everyone else can go ahead and, and talk about how you got involved in, in fighting against plastic pollution. And we'll start with Kiana. Awesome. Um, well, I'm part of Maui Julia Foundation. I'm an alumni and I first got involved with their summer eco adventure camp where we took um, kids middle school to high school all around the island, teaching them about environmental sustainability and filmmaking. So it was definitely how I got involved and definitely am continuing to do that as a filmmaker in college. Nice. What about you, Taryn? Um, I got involved with uh, the whole plastic uh, pollution camp um, because when I was in middle school, uh, Crystal had come, had came to the middle school and she had presented the camp to the entire school. At first, I was a little hesitant um, because I was like, you know, I didn't really kind of believe in that stuff, but um, I decided to try it out anyway. And ever since from then, seeing Crystal's energy and her love for the ocean has inspired me so much that I want to take this passion on and fight for our ocean. So I was in the seventh grade at the time. Um, and ever since I've been a plastic warrior. Fantastic. I love it. And Abby, what about you? How'd you get involved? Well, when I was in the fourth grade, um, I kind of found out the same way that Taryn found out. Crystal came to our school and she presented this camp and I actually ended up going into it a few days late and I never would have expected that everyone's energy 
would feed off and allow the passion to flow through. And then learning all about seeing presentations from campers and just learning and feeding off of everyone's energy is what kind of got me into plastic pollution and trying to get rid of it. Excellent. Excellent. And Taryn, I said Taryn, 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 got that right now. So Dyson, tell us about how policies, the policies that you've helped shape, how did you get involved with that? Totally. Um, so here in Hawaii, we recently passed um, legislation, uh, specifically in the county that I live in, Honolulu, to ban a variety of single-use plastics and phase them out. So we're kind of following in the footsteps of the Bahama plastic movement there. And um, I guess my role really as one of the few youth who was involved from the very beginning of those stages um, was to continue to get youth hyped about this, right? These hearings for these bills are happening at, for example, 10 o'clock on a Wednesday, like barely any kids can make it out to these. And so I had to go around and figure out how can I get kids to be excited about this, to be able to come out and be fine with skipping school, to fight for a future that we can all live in. And in the end, um, it really worked. We all pulled it off together. And soon enough, we had dozens of youth coming out to these hearings, making their voice heard. That is awesome. So it just took, uh, you had to dedicate extra energy and extra time to galvanizing your, your peers to come out to these events because I, I mean, I know a lot of adults that don't even want to go to these meetings, and yet you made time to ha make that happen, and that's so important um, and excellent. So thank you, thank you, Dyson. Um, Kiana, a question for you. How have you used your passion for filmmaking as an educational tool to spark inspiration and action amongst your peers? This is a great question, and I'm still definitely learning how to, you know, do that effectively because storytelling is not easy. There's a lot of planning and intentions that go behind every film. And so definitely learning to do that better and to engage with my peers is very important. But so far, I've used my passion for filmmaking to tell the stories that I believe the world needs to hear. Mm -hmm. And, you know, although they're pretty island centric with the main message being about sustainability or plastic pollution on my island, Maui. Um, and through the Maui Huliao Foundation, I've created various films, like a documentary um, covering a marine debris cleanup titled Washing Ashore, and a, like, a parody commercial called Plastic Addiction. So you can definitely check that out on our YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, through creating those films taught me a lot about, you know, the message that we're trying to portray because of the research and the script writing that you have to do before even going out there and filming things. But what I love so much about film is that it gives you the opportunity to share your stories and to share the stories of others. And it holds so much power to influence the masses and how everything is on the media nowadays. It's like, that's how you get your information. Um, but what I've realized is, you know, if it even inspires one person to make a positive change, then all of that hard work and dedication was worth it. And that's definitely what I see with um, this film, Plastic Warriors, is that it has such a powerful message and whoever watches it is gonna be so like energized to make a difference in our world. <laughs> Absolutely, art and storytelling always serves as the tip of the spear with any type of movement uh, that human beings create. I think it's the creative minds, those who can see beyond just what's black and white, but look at how can we how can we express something, something complex, something maybe boring, or something that isn't naturally you know uh, interesting for people. But how do you present it in a way that it is and that relates to them personally and their own experience in the world? So that's awesome that you started, and please definitely check out Kiana's films. Where was it again? Tell us where the location is. Um, Maui Juliao Foundation on YouTube. On YouTube, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And Abby, can you talk about how you were involved in the 2020 legislation in the Bahamas banning single-use plastic? How did you help shape that? And I'd like uh, Taryn to follow up right after as well. Well, a group of students and the teachers came together and it was really eye-opening to realize the steps that it takes to pass the bill and create a law. And it was just my role in it was kind of showing that Activism has no face, age, or gender to it. 
it's all about your passion on making a change. And like, it was amazing. One thing I remember about the experience was having a local lawyer come and help create this bill. And it was amazing to see everybody, everybody involved pushing their thoughts and opinions into it. And it was amazing seeing it come together two years later to become a law and a ban. And it's just so exciting to see what you saw it feels like yesterday, two years ago, as a dream come to be a reality and pushing the Bahamas closer and closer to become plastic free. That is fantastic. <laughs> and what about you? Um, well, with the ban, oh, okay. Um, with the ban, uh, it's very exciting to see. Um, I feel as though um, being involved in the movement and seeing like what's going on around us and seeing that, you know, we as people, we as young activists are making a change to better our future for all the future um, generations to come. So I was very proud and excited to see that, you know, change is being made, that people are using their voices to create an atmosphere for all people, you know, a clean environment. So. I'm so excited. I'm so proud of everybody who's getting involved in the plastic um, fight. And yeah. So. Well, you're a big part of that fight and we appreciate you guys working on that legislation because you know what, it's, it's really up to island nations to take the lead on this, I believe, and to see different island states and nations coming together and following similar policies that will end this addiction to plastic is major. And you guys played a huge role in that. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, that concludes our fourth panel. And I wanna say again, we really appreciate you guys being here with us tonight. Keep up the great work. We are so proud of you. Um, and yeah, we're gonna to continue to lift up your voices. So thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So for our last and final panel, uh, we wanna to speak to some two very special people. We've got a, a wonderful representative from the environment, uh, Bahamas Ministry of Environment, excuse me, Lindy Bao. And uh, we also got Dyson with us again to talk about the fact that the Bahamas passed this law back in, 20, in 2020 about single-use plastics. And it truly was a monumental law. With the collaboration between the Bahamas and Oahu by Hawaii, excuse me, I'm like getting tired a little bit, uh, ratifying the law banning single-use plastics. Can you tell us a little bit more about this legislation, how it works, and then also the public's reception to it? And we can start with Lindy. Okay, so this law has actually been something that the government has been working on from about seven years now, surprisingly. Background work has been going on since 2013. I think about around midway through the process, we met up with, or we found out about Crystal's um, initiative with the Bahamas Plastic Movement. And that was something that we are very excited about, hearing that persons were already on the ground agitating for something that we had been discussing. Um, but the ban came off pretty great. We have had a mixed reviews with public um, public acceptance towards it, but for the most part, we've had a really great outcome. A lot of persons are on board, a lot of persons understand why it's important. And so it's something that we're very excited and we're very proud about at the Ministry of Environment. Fantastic. And has it been a, a long, arduous, like, I mean, has it been really difficult as far as pushing that through um, within, you know, amongst your colleagues and things like that? Because we know how, you know, in any government institution, it's it's sometimes very tough to get certain policies passed in an expedient way. Um, what has been the fuel that's been behind that, that policy? Well, I think one of the things that's important to highlight is that several administrations have supported this ban. So we've had several different form, different governments in power and all of them were in agreement with the ban. Mm. Um, so that was one of the, one of the real reasons why it was so easy to pass. But like I said, seven years is not, it's not a quick time. It's not a quick turnaround time. But we wanted to take our time with it to make sure that we did it right. So we, we looked at what our counterparts in the Caribbean did and we learned from their, from their experiences and we tried to form the best possible scenario for our little islands. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Lindy. And, and Dyson, how does, it, how does the legislation look in Hawaii? What, what, how does it work? Totally. Um, so the legislation here in Hawaii, it's, it basically takes out a variety of single use plastics, kind of going for the whole big picture at once. Um, and the idea is that it's a phase out. So rather than cutting everything off at once, it's sort of a tiered system where you have some of the easy stuff like 
utensils, like straws, going first. And in the bill, it's written as 2021. And then you have some of the other stuff, which presumably businesses will have more stock of. So things like these styrofoam clamshells, um, those will be done with in 2022. And COVID has sort of disrupted the planning of that. But we're hopeful that those dates will continue to work as they are. Fantastic. And then one more question for all three of you. Uh, using policy, what are some of the additional ideas you may have for moving this forward in the global fight and local fight? What are the next steps that are needed in order to continue to you know, strengthen this legislation and hopefully create more? Well, I guess I can go first. So I think that the Bahamas has had a really great introduction to living, to getting towards becoming plastic free. And so eventually we want to include more items on our banned list. Right now we just have four. But eventually, once we get more persons accustomed and acclimatized to being more environmentally aware and making more smarter choices as it regards to single-use plastics, we eventually want to add more things to the list. Awesome. awesome. Crystal, what about you? Are there any other additions to the legislation you'd like to see in the near future? Yeah. Yes, first of all, I would love to, like to acknowledge the Bahamas Ministry of Environment and the Minister of Environment, the Honorable Ramal Ferreira. They've been doing a tremendous job uh, with the ban, um, getting the public really motivated to move forward. So I really just want to give some snaps to them um, and all the hard work that they're doing over in that office. Uh, for me, what I want to see is some frameworks created to address waste at all levels in the Bahamas, especially on beaches. Because we go, we do our beach cleanups and it's fun. It looks great for the gram, but the reality is we're just transferring that waste from one place to the next. And the same with the plastics ban where replacing you know, single-use plastics with another disposable. So I really wanna see a framework that addresses um, marine debris, um, uh, uh, solid waste um, that we create uh, and using that framework to be modeled all around the Caribbean. I think that's, that's the way forward. Be sure to check out our website, Crystal. We recently passed some legislation that speaks exactly to what you're talking about. Awesome, we'll do. Fantastic, see, we learned some every day. Uh, Dyson, what about you? What about what's what's next for Oahu and, and moving the legislation forward? Yeah, I mean, I got to strongly echo what Crystal said. Looking at plastics, they're just one part of the larger issues of waste management and climate change. And so we got to look at these holistic issues and figure out how we're going to take them on. And so totally in terms of like composting, for example, Jacqueline, the organization she's with, Kukua Hawaii Foundation, they're a part of a brilliant and wonderful hui that's taking on a lot of composting and waste management issues. And so just moving those forward, taking on the bigger picture or bigger issue, I guess, step by step. Um, I guess that's really the next step forward. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much. That is the conclusion of our fifth and final panel. Lindy, we appreciate you being here with us. Thank you very much. Yes. And thank you, Dyson, again, for hanging out and, and staying till the end. So Crystal, guess what? We're going to announce our trivia winner. You ready? We got who is it? Let's get a drum roll in your living room. Here we are. All right, and the winner is James Boxell. Oh my god, James! <laughs> James was actually my research advisor for my master's at Dalhousie University. Congratulations, wow. James, and thanks for tuning in. Yes, thank you, James. That's fantastic. And in th for those who are wondering, the, the correct answer, the four pillars of Bahamas Plastic Movement is research, education, citizen science, and policy change. Policy change. There it is. All right. And it looks like we have a couple of questions that came in. So we're going to do brief Q&A and then we're going to wrap it up. So we really appreciate everybody being here with us. Thank you for sticking around uh, to partake in the whole presentation. So the first question we've got is, is there a good practice guide we can share so other children around the world can join the movement? Uh, yes, there are some good practices. I would like to recommend the Alga Lita uh, Marine Research and Education Organization. They have an amazing platform uh, where youth can learn all about the issue and get activated, especially through their Wayfinder program, their Plastic Ocean Pollution Solutions International Youth Summit. So that's algalita.org. And if you want to see some cool things that youth are doing, you can check out Bahamas Plastic Movement's website and our YouTube channel as well. There are a lot of youth education videos there. Very cool. The second question is, there are many biodegradable packaging packaging uh, or packages, and we should be advocating them. How can we get our governments to enforce packaging of our products? 
Um, that's easier said than done here in the Bahamas, in my opinion, because we are not a food secure nation. We rely so much on packaging. We import 90% of everything that we use in this country and that comes uh, pre-packaged, right? So it's not that the, these packagings are manufactured here. So that makes it a little bit harder. So not until we get a global convention on how plastic is produced, because we won't get rid of plastic until we stop it at the source, um, which is industry, you know, so it needs to be shifted there before governments can really take it on, in my opinion. Yeah, I echo that for sure. Yeah, we need to turn off the tap. That's where it begins. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, our third question is, how can anti-plastic activists challenge the structure or system of plastics violent presence without over-relying on individual behavior change? That's a good question. I think a very great resource to look at for that would be the story of plastic. Shout out to Steve Wilson that looks at plastic from its source, its use to its disposal. And there they're challenging not just the narrative of plastic and its impact on the ocean, but looking at it from the industry standpoint, especially the oil industry, and really trying to um, drive that collective push. Um, and they are looking at a break free from plastic legislation for all of the US right now. So break free from plastic is another organization that you can look at and see how collective organizations are, are pushing this. Highly, highly recommend that documentary. You can view it on Amazon Prime and you can rent it there. And it's awesome. It's awesome. Because, you know, Crystal, it's weird where people I speak to to this day who still don't understand that plastic comes from fossil fuels. Like, right. They don't even know the origin, but the documentary addresses that and shows you every single step um, from start to finish in, in the life of plastic. So definitely check it out if, you're, if you haven't seen it yet. Okay, so our fourth and final question, what more can I do to help you and the Bahamas plastic movement? We need <laughs> your help. Um, we are a nonprofit, the grassiest grassroots organization. You can imagine all of our programs are tuition free. So we need that guap, that moolah. So whatever you have to offer, whether that's a penny, five dollars, uh, you can donate to our organization um, at BahamasPlasticMovement.org slash donate. And all of the donations go towards our educational programs, funding uh, opportunities for students and getting our research initiatives off the ground. Um, and that's the best way that you can help us. And if you're interested in volunteering, uh, you can fill out a form on our website as well. So cool, so cool. And what can we tell our trivia winner, uh, James, to, to send in order to receive his prize? So James, drop me a message. You got my contact um, and send me a mailing address and we will get that package out to you. And again, thank you to the Plastic Pollution Coalition and Deanna Cohen for sponsoring that swag bag. I kind of wish, I kind of want that bag, but no, me too. you should have it, James. <laughs> it's all yours, all yours, James. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in tonight. I think we have one more thing we want to do before we log off. Yes, any closing words, Crystal? Closing words is your voice matters. You have the power. You can too become a plastic warrior. And you've watched this film. You've heard, you've heard us talk about the issue of plastic pollution, what youth and young people and older folks all around the world are doing. So by virtue, by extension, you all, wherever you are right now, you are a plastic warrior. And we got a plastic warrior roll call we want to do right now. Y'all with me, right? We got Will, we got Abby, we got Taryn, we got Dyson, who's all the way in Hawaii. So y'all know the drill. Plastic! Warrior! So I just want to say thank you to everyone for tuning in. We really appreciate your love and support. Uh, it goes a long way. Uh, all of the sponsors, all of our panelists, all of our streaming partners, all of our viewers, thank you so much. And most importantly, I would be nothing without the plastic warriors all around the world, especially here in the Bahamas, especially here on Eleuthera. Y'all know I love you. Y'all my ride or dies. Um, let's do this. We got this. We could fix this plastic pollution. We are the change. We are the solution. We can fix this plastic pollution. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks to our volunteers and all of, also our, commun our communications team, Dream Team, Serafina, Kiana, Chris, Faith. I would be nowhere without you. This event would not be possible. So thank you so much. And Danny, hey. how can I not thank you? All right. I really appreciate you for making the time. You know, we've been riding a little while now. So, sis, I appreciate you and come back home. Come to visit us soon. Thank you. I can't wait. I can't wait. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good Bye. Night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night.